Missionary Commissariat in France, which includes a principal congregation and what we term distant congregations, which I visit. And they have, those distant congregations have begun to contact me again regarding religious services. For 19 months and two days, we, were the, we are only able to hold home services. Many home services of small masked groups in private homes. But we resumed our church services on the 3rd of October last year. In addition to these groups, there is now another type, which I'll say more about in a few minutes. They are of great potential for the FCE and our work for Jesus. So I want to speak to you very briefly this morning, therefore, about our mission and its direction. It is a niche mission. But before I do so, I need to read to you something with which you are very familiar. It is to be found in the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 28, verses 16 to 20. And it is known as the Great Commission of Jesus Christ. These words have been the inspiration and impetus to everything that my wife Sarah and I have done in France, as has the hymn that we shall sing at the, to close this devotional and thought for the day. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Before my wife Sarah and I moved permanently to France upon her retirement in September 2014, I had already conducted services for English Anglican expatriates living in the area where our little holiday house was located. We knew that there was a need before we settled in France. I haven't got time to tell you everything about our mission and our chapel, which we lost to threats of violence against us, against our parishioners, and against our furniture in the church, actual violence against Sarah and others, appalling dishonesty, criminal defamation, and witchcraft. These events certainly confirm the truth of what Jesus said about those who take on mission for our faith in the tough words to be found also in Matthew's Gospel. I am sending you out like sheep among wolves. Therefore, be as shrewd as snakes and as innocent as doves. Be on your guard. You will be handed over to the local councils and be flogged in the synagogues. On my account, you will be brought before governors and kings as witnesses to them and to the Gentiles. But when they arrest you, do not worry about what to say or how to say it. At that time, you will be given what to say, for it will not be you speaking, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. In February 2015, much to my surprise, the Lady Chaplain of the Church of England Chaplaincy in which we are located, asked me to look after, those were her words, all the Anglicans to the east of the Vienna River, as they had no ordained person anywhere in that huge area. Due to the fact that over two thirds of the approximately 540,000 Brits living in France are retired and part of the silver set, like me. I believe that God called us 
to mission amongst that group. I believe still that expatriates in general should be the focus of our missionary work. This was confirmed for me when a couple from North London said to me in 2015 that if I had not turned up with Sarah, they would have had to return to England. So grievously did they miss their Anglican parish church and Anglican services. The CRE chaplaincy has provided absolutely no support to them and others because it couldn't. This is also true, I hasten to add, for those young, hard-working British families who established themselves on the continent before Brexit. They are still coming across the channel, but it is all much more bureaucratic now. In 2019, I was contacted by other Anglicans, as I mentioned last night, but they turned out to be ultra-liberal, post-modernist, and unbiblical, especially in regard to moral issues. They were very antagonistic. However, since the worst of COVID has abated, I have again been contacted, as I mentioned last night, by two, or yesterday afternoon, by two Anglican men who are like us, who are leading Anglican groups like us. One in Dodoin, France, where there are so many English settlers that they call it Dodoinshire, <laughs> and the other one in southern Spain. And he has told me about another group in Catalonia, in northeastern Spain, who would be interested in connecting to us. There are not far off one million British expatriates in Spain, I understand. So this has provided my church wardens, delegates and others with an idea which we call Delegation for Growth. This would entail bringing men like those I've just described with proven track records and Anglican groups already established into the FCE and after very careful vetting and checks on them here and there, getting those men ordained. This would serve two purposes. Developing the FCE on the continent amongst our own British Biblical Anglican people, plus new people brought to Christ through them, and making it possible for me to give up some of my travel and some of my responsibilities. Sadly, my wife is not well, permanently. Neither Sarah nor I can do what we have been doing for the FCE, and for Almighty God in France, or what we did before COVID. At least we cannot do so with me <clears throat> as the sole FCE presbyter in France beyond the end of this year. The truth is that we now need the help of dedicated, honourable and honest clergy with their wives. My erstwhile assistant and curate has proven to be incapable and unwilling to take on such responsibilities in France, as he made clear to all of us in France on the 18th of January. And he is now intent upon returning to his place of origin here in Derbyshire, just down the road. Once again, we have picked ourselves up God has dusted us off and then set us on our way again, but this time with a different perception and a far greater sense of reality. Thus, we ask for your prayers to recreate, then expand our mission to our own British Christian people and those whom we can bring to salvation through the medium of our own English language on the continent. There are groups ripe for mission and connection, not only in France and Spain, but also in Portugal, Italy, Greece, Bulgaria. In fact, 
wherever on the continent of Europe, it's sunny most of the time, sunny from here, and property is cheaper, and often very, very much cheaper, to buy than it is in the United Kingdom. There is a great need, and there is much to do. There are people on the ground willing to do it. I believe that this could be a great opportunity for our church, and also, surprisingly, with the support of the Roman Catholic Church and its vast network of buildings and churches in Europe, which I certainly never expected would be offered freely for our use, or that we would share our Bible studies topics and prayer lists with Roman Catholics. I don't want to go into all that now because we haven't really got time. But it is, I think, another sign that God really does work in mysterious and totally unexpected ways. And that he wants us to do so, to work on the continent of Europe, particularly with our own people. So, let us pray for mission where it is actually possible for the FCE, with its limited resources, but also with Roman Catholic support, to advance our mission, to preach and teach and to bring people to faith through that medium, through those people on the continent of Europe, where there are nearly three million British people living. So let us pray.